Good morning, Sebastian. Congratulations on a strong set of Q3 results. What were the key highlights? Good morning, Scott. Pleasure to be talking with you again. We're very pleased with both the quarters and year-to-date results. Uh, we've noted four recurring themes, which are the hallmark of a predictable and reliable business, and of course, our investment. First is our continued strong operating performance, as we are on track to again bid our full year production guidance for the ninth year in a row. Uh, second, in our continued balance sheet strengths with a leverage ratio near zero. Third is of course our focus on shareholder returns, which has seen us return nearly $225 million to shareholder since the beginning of the year. And fourth is our success in moving forward our robust organic growth pipeline, with Sabadola Masawa Phase 1 on track for completion in the fourth quarter. Value studies currently underway and our recently announced plan to discover up to 20 million ounces over the next five years. Now, Sebastian, nine years in a row is quite impressive, especially given the various integrations made. Tell me how you have managed to maintain the operational performance, particularly through quarters like the last where the wet season can be unpredictable. Well, Scott, it's definitely been a tremendous year so far. Uh, following another strong performance this quarter, we're on track for a record year. We now anticipate bidding the top end of our full year production guidance at an all-in sustaining cost within the guided range, despite all the current industry-wide inflation theme. All our assets are performing well, and of course, at the group level, a big reason for this year's success has been the rapid integration of the newly acquired assets thanks to our well-established operating platform in West Africa. You mentioned the rainy season. It happens every year. So it's our job to manage our mine plans and to build stockpiles ahead of it. This quarter, we actually performed better than initially budgeted. And we're particularly pleased with the performance of Hyundai and Sabadola Masawa. Hyundai has been benefiting from the high-grade ore from the carry palm deposit while Sabadola Masawa grades increased due to higher grade from the Sofia main pit. But beyond our production performance, we are also very pleased with our all-in sustaining cost performance, which remains in line with guidance and in the bottom quartile across our senior goal peers. We've been able to control our costs despite the inflationary pressures we are seeing across the industry. We benefited from renegotiating contracts as a larger group earlier this year and we have locked in prices for our key consumable up to mid next year or beyond. Now let's touch upon the balance sheet. You've been focused on deleveraging yourself to make Endeavour a resilient business. How's that going? For us, as you know, the balance sheet is now one of our strengths as our leverage ratio is close to zero. This quarter we generated over $300 million in operating cash flow and despite paying a $70 million dividend and buying back $35 million worth of shares, we were still able to continue to improving our balance sheet and lower our net debt to around $70 million. In fact, if we had wanted to, we could have been in a net cash position by now. Uh, with our capital allocation framework, we're taking a balanced approach where we're continuing to strengthen the balance sheet while also continuing to invest in exploration, our gross projects, and crucially, in rewarding our shareholders. We believe this is the right recipe for long-term success. Now let's talk more about your shareholder return program. Given the strengthening of your balance sheet and the strong performance of the business, can investors continue to expect higher returns? Already this year, we've seen $220 million in shareholder returns, and this remains a key capital allocation priority for us. Shareholders have been patiently waiting for us to be in cash harvest mode and we are keen to reward them. Given its importance, we provided a three-year outlook on expected dividend earlier this year. Our minimum commitment for this year is $125 million and it is expected to increase to at least $175 million in three years' time. I say minimum because it will be supplemented with additional dividends and buybacks provided that the prevailing gold price remains above 1500 per ounce and that leverage remains below 0.5 times net debt to adjusted EBITDA. During Q3, we paid our H1 interim dividend of $70 million, which is over half of our guided fixed minimum dividend for the full year, 
So shareholder can expect more than the fixed minimum of $125 million to be paid for this year. And in addition, we're continuing share repurchases. And since launching the program in April, we've bought back $94 million of shares. Now, Sebastian, shifting to growth, there's no lack of options at Endeavour. But how are you prioritizing it? Well, the immediate priority is to complete the phase one expansion at Sabadola, which is on track for Q4 this year. We've actually commissioned five out of the six packages already, with the gravity circuit to be added in December. This week we've been at the mine with the board and it was really pleasing to be able to show them the remarkable progress made on both the expansion and the integration. We are now working on completing the definitive feasibility study for the phase two expansion and expect to green light the investment early next year, which would result in Sabadola Masawa becoming a true tier one asset. Regarding the Greenfield projects, we are currently working on the definitive feasibility studies for Fedecro and for Kalana. What's also interesting is the brownfield expansion projects, which could materialize at other mines as well. Given our ambition to discover 15 to 20 million ounces over the next five years, we may end up with mine life significantly beyond 10 years, which could result in very good potential to expand existing infrastructure to bring forward production. And talking about exploration, you announced a new five-year exploration strategy this quarter. Can you tell us how it differs from the old strategy and what to look for in the coming years? Well, those that have followed our story closely since 2016 know just how important exploration has been to our value creation success. Patrick and his team have done a tremendous job by discovering 8.5 million answers in a short time frame. This has allowed us to extend the mine lives of core assets to beyond 10 years, while at the same time discovering new projects. Following the acquisition of Semaphore and Teranga, the team has been busy developing a new five-year exploration program to prioritize our exploration efforts and integrate the new assets. We've reshaped the team and applied the same unique ranking and screening methodology, which has underpinned our success. The conclusion is that we remain extremely bullish on the prospectivity of our portfolio. Our new target is to discover between 15 to 20 million ounces of indicated resources over the next five years, which represents more than two times our mine depletion. This year we've had a very good exploration results so far from the drilling programs at all three of our cornerstone assets, ET, Hyundai and Sabadola Masawa, with new discoveries at each site. As such, we are on track to discover more than 2.5 million ounces of indicated resources for the group for the year. Now you gained the listing in the premium section of the London Stock Exchange in June and then gained FTSE indexation in the UK in September. Has the listing been a success? We're very pleased with uh, our listing on the premium segment of the LSE and we are seeing growing interest from UK and European funds. Hopefully, uh, you have noted our strong liquidity in the UK, particularly compared to some of our dual listed peers, as we are seeing strong demand out of the UK alone. In September, we were included in the FTSE 250 and the FTSE All Share Indexes, which we expect to drive both direct demand and passive demand as investors start to take note of our index inclusion. As our share price continues to perform well, we have sight on becoming eligible for other indices, including the MSCI Europe indices and potentially the FTSE 100. Sebastian, thank you for taking the time today. Always a pleasure and congratulations on the results and good luck with the rest of the year. Thank you, Scott. Uh, as you can see, we're very excited on how the year is uh, shaping up and uh, for our plans going forward as we continue to deliver on our strategy. Given the confidence we have in our ability to deliver a strategy, we are able to provide long-term outlooks across our business, which offers a differentiated investment for our investors. We have a five-year production outlook, which demonstrates growth and cost stability, clear visibility across our growth projects, five-year discovery outlook, and of course, a minimum progressive dividend commitment over the next several years. I would like to thank our team for their hard work this quarter and look forward to presenting our record results at your end. Thank you.